Hi, everybody, and welcome to a special NCAA Tournament Edition of ProLine. Jim Feist is here. John Creighton is here. I'm Dave Koken. We're glad to have you guys with us. Hope you're enjoying the tournament so far. We're going to be looking at uh, some of the big matchups in the Sweet 16 in this edition of ProLine. Before we get to that, though, let's talk about what's going on in terms of the selections. Jim Feist, boy, not bad, huh? 19-7-1 run in college basketball. It's the right time of year to do something like that, isn't it? Uh, you know, sometimes you have a good season, you come down to the end, you just can't get the, you know, get it done at the postseason. And this is, it's been a good season all along. You get to the postseason is even better. I mean, it's, you know, 197 and one in college hoops, wonderful money making week, 12 and four weekend with all plays, two and one with college inner circles, 25 and 15 inner circle, six and zero with the college basketball game of the year. Go on and on and on and on. I mean, you know, Virginia was the big play. They went 78 to 60 over Memphis. That was a, that was over before it started. Got the Sweet 16 game of the year going this weekend. It's a hundred dollars online. Just like the other six games, it's already won. You can get this for 25 bucks with a guarantee. You will win or the co and the, or the college and NBA season up through April 7th is absolutely free if you don't win this game. Get the Inner Circle winners with me. Call 1-866-841-1655. And, of course, you can buy it online for $100. That's 25 bucks. You call along with the guarantee, 1-866-841-1655, or buy it right here online for 100 bucks. John, uh, bring us up to speed with what's happening with Mr. Vegas. I know you got a five-play countdown coming up. That's right. One of his exclusive plays is called a wise guys play. He's got his wise guys game of the year in college hoops. That's going Friday. That play alone is 50 bucks online. However, you can get that five play countdown, five games going Friday, including that wise guys game of the year. All five for 15 bucks from Mr. Vegas. Just call 1-866-896-1627. Hey, John, uh, I don't do brackets. I did the one for uh, Buffett's. One billion dollars, and I, I got knocked out in the very first game. Uh, because it's straight up, I took, Ohio, I took Ohio State against Dayton. I mean, straight up, I didn't, I didn't play the game on, on the spread. In fact, I like Dayton plus the points, but uh, you know, straight up, I'm taking Ohio State. So, so I was 0 and 1 immediately, and I did not win the billion dollars from Warren Buffett. I really don't care about brackets, but I do look at them because. I'm hoping for certain matchups, obviously. Well, I got the one matchup I really wanted, and it goes on Friday. I'm going to make that my NCAA tournament game of the year. Absolutely, absolutely like this game, about as much as I can like a game in college basketball. Now, you're going to get that game online on the day of the game for $49. But if you call the office, I'm going to give you the game at half price, and I'm going to include seven full days of NBA in the other college basketball that I like as well. Everything but $25, that includes the big game. So if this is a good offer. Jump on it right now, and you don't have to wait until Friday to get the game. In fact, I recommend that you don't wait until Friday because you'll get a better number now than you will on the day of the game. And every half point matters uh, in college basketball or any other sport for that matter. If you don't know that, then you're probably not winning money. Uh, There's a thing called value. So get the game of the year, the game of the year, plus... Twenty-five bucks. One eight six six eight nine six one six two nine is the number to call. That's one eight six six eight nine six sixteen twenty nine. All right, let's go. Uh, Baylor and Wisconsin matching up. Uh, the Badgers about a three-point favorite. The total is about one thirty-seven. Uh, obviously, both teams have gotten really hot at the right time. Uh, Wisconsin. I I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that Wisconsin's among the sixteen teams remaining. Jim, I think it's a shock to a lot of people, considering where they were at midseason, that Baylor is still playing. But you can argue Baylor's playing the best basketball in the tournament right now. They've been outstanding. Well, their head coach made a big big adjustment uh, uh, a couple of games ago, about ten games ago, I think it was. And they switched it out of the man-to-man, -man, which I think they were playing a little bit lazy in the man-to-man, -man, and they switched to a zone. Uh, Baylor has some length, and when you have long zones... That with athletes uh, like they are, uh, zones can be very difficult. Uh, now, of course, Wisconsin likes to bomb away from outside. And they, the old theory was you can bomb over a zone, but 
uh, this, you know, when you have this kind of length, it makes it more difficult. Baylor is playing about as good as anybody at this point. They just annihilated the teams that they played. Now, when you talk about Wisconsin, uh, I was on Oregon, one of the few losses that I've had. I had Oregon, and that, was, of course, was a very difficult loss. The game was inside the number right up to the last couple seconds, and then the, I think there was that stupid penalty and, and uh, foul shots. And foul shots, of course, at the end of the game can kill you when you have dogs. You know you can never have a bad beat in overtime if you bet, bet favorites, right? You know that. It's only when you have the underdog because you've already won, and now you've got to win again, and there's no upside to it. But that's what happened there. Wisconsin, very good team. Bo Ryan's club, I mean, this guy's a genius of a, of a coach. He's been around a long time. So the coaching edge, I think it probably heads to the experienced guy with Wisconsin, and, and, and rightfully so. But when you look at them playing against a very difficult zone that was a very hot team right here, this is going to be a very tough matchup for either one of these clubs to walk away with. I think it's going to be extremely tight. Yeah, I think so too, Jim. I, I, it looks like a great game. And it's interesting to note that these two teams have something in common, which was horrible midseason slumps where nobody could figure out what was going on. Baylor had the 8 out of 10 loss stretch. They looked dead. And the game that turned them around was a game where they were down most of the day. And believe me, I remember it well because I, I, I won a big play on this, and it was a lucky win. Uh, I had Kansas State. Again, I had Baylor against Kansas State, and uh, I think Baylor won by 14 in double overtime. Was that that game? That yes. game that turned their it turned it. It was a big win for me. A very lucky win, obviously, uh, but it was a bigger win for Baylor because it turned their season around. They followed that up and they won another overtime game the next time out, and it's been nonstop. They never looked back since. This team's got a ton of talent. Wisconsin also had a bad stretch. You know, they're talking about this team as a Final Four possibility early in the year, maybe a number one seed, and then they hit a roadblock and they lost five out of six games and really looked lousy in the process. It just goes to show you that don't judge by what's happening in the middle of the season what might happen at the end of the season. Both teams are in peak form right now. I think the Baylor zone is going to give Wisconsin some troubles. We know they can shoot the three, so maybe they've got the zone busters, but I don't think they're going to get easy looks with the height that Baylor has. You just talked about that, Jim. At the same time, Wisconsin is just tough, gritty. They make you work for everything. Uh, they're, I, I, you know, I, the total in the game is 133, and my impulse here is to go with the under. I think this is a game going to be played in the 60s. Hope it doesn't get to overtime, because <laughs> that'll shoot the under out of the water if it does. But I believe this will be a, a patiently paced game as teams look for their opportunities against two tough defenses. And I'm going to go with the under. Uh, John, how about you? You know, I originally wanted to look at this game uh, as a, a high-scoring game, going over the total as an up-tempo game. However, the total came up a little bit too high for my liking. Uh, but the thing is, both these teams have very balanced scoring inside and out, which is going to help both offenses. If you do like to play overs, Wisconsin's on a 5-1 and one run over the total. they got the big guys with Decker and Kaminsky inside. They just hung 85 points on West Oregon. Team doesn't play a lot of defense. Still, they shot 48%, 11 of 28 from long range. Different situation, though, against Baylor. Baylor also has fantastic inside and out scoring. They get Jefferson and Gathers up front. They get Cherry and Haslip in the backcourt. They scored 74 and 85 points in these two tournament games. Do wonder at times, though, about this Baylor defense and free throw shooting. They're last in the Big 12. I wonder when is that going to catch up with them, if it is at all. But still, you got to... A Badger team that's 7-1 and one ATS against the Big 12. They're 5-0 and oh ATS in non-conference game. But Baylor does have the inside and outside game to hang with Wisconsin. And it's tough to go against a team, Dave, that's on a 12-2 and two straight up, 11-3 and three ATS run. Small lean toward Baylor here. Well, it, it's tough to go against any of these teams now because you got 16 teams left in the tournament. And the one thing they have in common, they're all hot. That's, that's why they're still playing. Uh, we want you to get the games that we're advertising It'll cost you a few bucks, but we think you're going to make a lot of money in the process. But here's something that's not going to cost you anything. And that's our daily free plays from Jim and myself that you can get on a text message. Send it right to your cell phone. It's as simple as can be. Uh, to get mine, you text Koken, C-O-K-I-N, to 313131. Jim, same story with you. A free play every day on a text message. That's right, Dave. Uh, just text WINNER, W-I-N-N-E-R. 
to 313131. We'll send you a free play right to your cell phone each and every day. That's winner to 313131. Now, you go back to the Baylor game. I like to mention one, one other thing about Baylor. Uh, they played in the championship game against Iowa State, and a lot of people thought Baylor should have won that game. I made a big play on Iowa State in that game, and there was one reason and one reason only, not because I really felt the other team was better. They looked about even to me. Baylor was playing their fourth game in four days. That is impossible for a college team to do that. They don't do that. Pros don't do that. You know, and then... Iowa State had a little bit of an advantage there. They were playing their third game in three days. So there was an advantage of one game, which is very fatiguing. And at the end of that game, Baylor dominated the entire game until about the last five or six minutes, and Iowa State took over and won the game. So you can't put a knock on Baylor uh, for that loss. It was strictly a, a scheduling issue. Uh, they kept winning. They ended up, in, you know, they played well, and now they're playing well again. And all these teams are having plenty of rest coming into this game, so it's not going to be a factor. All right. Well, San Diego State and Arizona are going to meet, and this is a dynamite West Coast matchup. They met early in the season with the Wildcats pulling out a win. Uh, there isn't any secret about San Diego State. They're not a very good offensive basketball team. Thames is the only guy who can create a shot. He has been spectacular. He's the Mountain West Player of the Year. Arizona uh, would have the offensive edge. But, boy, I'm telling you what. This Aztec team on defense is as fierce as they get. Steve Fisher is a great basketball coach, uh, and he's going to have his team ready. And with this time to prepare, he's going to come up with defensive wrinkles that are going to make life tough on Arizona. Uh, at the same time, the Wildcats have overcome a crucial injury. That Ashley, they look like they're playing basically at the same level they did before he got hurt. I mean, they, uh, they sleepwalked through the game against Weber State, got up by 21, and then put it on cruise control, which actually... Uh, it bothered me a bit because I had Arizona in the game and should have covered, but they, well, they didn't. Uh, but uh, they got it the next game, they got it done, and that was a really impressive performance over the weekend. Uh, that was a dominating performance by Arizona. I, I think, look, San Diego State is going to make this a very tough and ugly basketball game because that's what San Diego State does. If you want pretty basketball, Watch something else, because you're not going to see it in this game. This is going to be nasty, physical. Uh, shots are going to be contested. San Diego State's going to try and turn this into not a dirty game, but a physical grinder, just nasty game. And I think they're going to do it. Uh, to me, you know, I, I do believe Arizona's going to win the game. I, I have not made a decision as to whether to play the game on the uh, spread or not. But i got to tell you something. I, first team to 60 wins this game. There's not going to be a lot of points scored here. This is, this is as San Diego State is going to go out there and just turn it into an alley fight. And I think Arizona is going to be right there with them. Arizona doesn't back down from anybody. They're a tough physical team themselves. Not really a Pac-10 style or Pac-12 style, style team. If you want to look at how they kind of play in the Pac-12. You know, UCLA... Uh, Stanford, these teams like to get up into California, like to get up and down the court, play fun basketball that's very enjoyable to watch. Arizona, they just as soon get gritty and down and dirty. I think these teams will collide. I think it's going to be, a, a, you could argue, a terrible game from a standpoint of offense. You know, I'm maybe 50 points in the first half, maybe a little more as, as they wear down in the second half. But 122 looks high to me, guys. I think the unders the side here, or the unders the total here. John? Well, I have some concerns uh, with this San Diego State team. All year long, they're not a great shooting team. 0.437% for the year. That's 202nd in the country. And just look what they've done re recently. They lost in the Mountain West Conference tourney uh, to Mex New Mexico, scoring just 58 points. And then the last two games, yeah, they blew out North Dakota State. They also went overtime against New Mexico State. Only shot 39% for the game in that one. Just 6 of 13, 6 of 17 from long range. That game was in Spokane. And their lack of height certainly was a concern in that game. And boy, is it going to ever be a concern against this Arizona team, which is just so loaded. You want to start with uh, defense for Arizona. Tops in the Pac-12 and points allowed just 60 points per game. Tops in field goal shooting. Defense under 40%. And 
people may make uh, out of the fact that they lost to UCLA, a red-hot team in that Pac-12 tourney game. But look at the previous two games. They won by 20 and 32 points. And then the last game against a Gonzaga team that I liked, boy, they just manhandled them, 84 wow. to 61. Yeah, eight block shots. One guy, the Pac-12 Player of the Year, a guard of all people, Nick Johnson, had four of those block shots. They also set an Arizona record for steals in a tourney game with 15 that ran off 21 points. So I, I'm going to take the Arizona height in this game. Arizona, when they're playing in non-conference games, they're 21 and eight against the spread, and they've already won at San Diego State. So Jim, I'm going to back to Arizona. Well, I don't, I don't blame you. I mean, the market is backing Arizona. The game opened six. It's up to seven and a half. And the total is about 121, 121 and a half. See some 122s. So it's in that range, Dave, as you talk about 60 points. Uh, when you look at over and under stats, you got the under is, uh, in Aztec games 15 and five versus Pac-12 teams. And, and, uh, the under in uh, the Wildcat games are 14 and six. So, you got all the stats, and of course the marketplace has put up a, a very low number in 121, 122, something there. So I, I kind of agree with that. Uh, there's no question that uh, Arizona has played a superior schedule. When you look at the and, and you know, the top-rated team in the country, or one of the top-rated teams in the country, and for a good reason. Uh, you know, and if the game is that ugly, you can always put this game on one of your TVs to keep it silent. And turn on the Playboy channel. <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> I like that strategy. It's not bad. All right. Well, let's look at one more. Uh, because here you've got one team that I think most people figured would be playing at this point in the season. And another that, you know, he turned back the clock about six weeks. And they're screaming down in Knoxville, get Quanzo, Quanzo Martin out of here. We don't like him. We want another coach. They're ready to throw a parade for him now. Uh, because Tennessee has gotten hot. Tennessee was the most underseeded team coming into this tournament. If you look at the Ken Palm rankings, and there's no bias in the Ken Palm rankings at all. They're just pure numbers and metrics. This team was borderline top ten in the metrics, so they had actually underachieved during the season. But they're not underachieving anymore. They're playing really good basketball now. Michigan, Jim John Beeline might be the best game coach in the country. Boy, is he tough to go against. He's got a lot of time to prep for this game. That's going to make this a difficult assignment for the Volunteers, I think. Well, when you look at coaching matchups, there's no question. A lot of these, you do have some coaches here that are, are going up against it. Uh, you know, Virginia, you know, against the Izzo. And, and it's, 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 these, these favorites basically have the coach that is, you know, quote unquote, the better of the coaches, or let's just say the more experienced of the coaches. But, you know, as time passes, things change. Tennessee has just gotten absolutely red hot. They they handled Iowa. That was an overtime game, but they handled the Iowa. They beat up Mass and they beat up Mercer. And you might argue that they aren't the, the toughest teams in the world to play, which and they're not. Uh, Michigan, on the other hand, didn't didn't have that much trouble with uh, a Wolford, or Wofford, I should say, is speaking properly. And Texas, uh, they handled them pretty easily, too. And I... Texas a young team, so they just didn't didn't get into the game. But these are very tough teams. Uh, Tennessee has absolutely been red hot. They have the physicality underneath. Uh, it, they, this game should be very very tough. There's no question about it. Coaching edge, of no, course, I, to Michigan. Well, and that's the thing because in a close game, I don't know. I, I think Tennessee is. I actually think Tennessee might be the more talented squad, but Beeline really scares me, especially. Uh, with this much time to prep, um, I think this is the, I, personally, I think this is the toughest of the first round of the uh, Sweet 16 games, uh, from my vantage point. And I don't think I'm going to end up with a play on it. What I will tell you is this, uh, Tennessee is, uh, that was a good Mercer team they beat, uh, on Sunday. And obviously in the first round they looked superb. Uh, these guys are really good and they have tremendous confidence in themselves right now. And the one thing we found out, in this tournament, the SEC, which was uh, pretty much bad mouth throughout the year, it's way down this year, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Turns out the SEC has some pretty good teams in it. Kentucky just knocked out a number one, a legit number one seed in Wichita State. They played a great game to do it. We know what uh, some of the other teams in Florida is the overall number one seed. I mean, the conference is actually a lot better than people thought it was. 
and uh, Tennessee, they're a dangerous basketball team. Here's the other thing, John. Um, you know, I, I, I just the number here troubles me. Why isn't this number three or three and a half? Because I know the public is going to bet Michigan in this game. I know they are. And to me, when I see that number, that two and a half number has always been an interesting one to me, more so in football than basketball. But when I see two and a half, and I know the favorites, the popular side, makes me look at the underdog. I'm not going to say that I'm going to necessarily do that here. If it was a football game, I would, because if it was a football game, it'd be, it'd be a pretty good indicator from the odds maker where they're trying to get the action. Not so much the case in basketball, but i got to respect Tennessee's recent play here. And I, I, I think I would lean to Michigan, but don't chisel that in stone. John? Yeah, the, the odds maker certainly favored Tennessee or gave them more respect earlier as they opened this game around one, and now it's moved up to, to two and a half on Michigan. Yeah. The, the thing that stands out for me when I look at the differences between these teams, it would be one matchup edge, and that would be rebounding. I mean, this Michigan team does everything well except one thing, and that's rebounding. 303rd in the nation in rebounding. Not a big team in the front court. You know, when that Big Ten tourney title game, People were back in Michigan State. Michigan was a plus three dog, and boy, did they get hammered in that game. Michigan State shot, uh, held them to 31%, and then they shot 50%, won the battle of the boards, won the game easily. And here you have a Tennessee team. That's the strength. They got Stokes and Maiman up front, monster guys in the low post, Tennessee 20th in the nation in rebounds, and Jordan McRae, 18.6 points per game. It's a team that can set you up with the low post setting it up first in the low post, and that opens things up along the perimeter. So they have the capability of shooting the three. They were seventh in the SEC in the middle of the pack. Haven't seen it yet in tournament play in, in these three games. They shot five of 21 from long range against Iowa, two of 14 in the middle game, and then six of 22. So they haven't been hitting, but they, they weren't this bad during the regular season. But that's something they can do against Michigan. They will have some open looks. And, of course, the volunteer defense my goodness, these last six games, 54, 44, 45, 56, 67, and 63 points. They don't like an up-tempo game. This is all about defense. Going to have to lean a little bit with the underdog here. Tennessee playing great right now. They're 7-2 and two in non-conference games, and I do like that rebound edge. So I'll have a small lean toward Tennessee, Dave. Yeah, you know, I, I, Jim, if they kidnap the coaches for the game, and it's, I'm not knocking Martin because I, I think Martin's done a good job. I think Michigan might be the most overperforming team in the country. I really believe that. I, I don't think they're that good. And yet Beeline finds a way to, to win basketball games. That's what scares the hell out of me here. I don't. Now this guy's been a great coach at his other stops. He's back in his days at Canisius, at Richmond, uh, and, and now he's got the big the, he got the big job at Michigan. And boy, he sure has adapted well to the big stage. I I don't. This is a guy I don't like going against. Almost in, in, basically in any game, there's spots where I'll take my chances against them. And this one scares me. So all I can tell you is that my uh, my big games on Friday, it sure isn't this one. <laughs> well, co coaching makes a big difference, uh, especially, I feel, in college basketball. You're dealing with a lot of young men, uh, 18 to 22 years old generally. The coaches make a big difference if they can get command their attention and and respect and, and get them to do what they're supposed to do. The team's 27 and 8 on the year, uh, reasonable against the point spread, 19 and, and 13 against the point spread. They're, they're on a decent run at the present time, covered five of their last eight and three of their last four. But the other side, Tennessee's covered seven of their last eight, three of their last four. And when I look at the ratings, Tennessee actually rates higher in the last uh, several games, last eight, ten games. Uh, it, it's it's very it's very difficult uh, to ignore the coaching edge in experience because you know star is born every day. These young coaches that don't have the experience eventually will grow and take over. I mean, it's you know the old guys don't always stay in command, but uh, a lot of that's happening this week. When you look at the point spreads for these games, there's eight games over the two days. There's only one game that's over seven. That's Arizona, seven and a half. It opened six. A little bit of money for Wisconsin went from three to three and a half. Stanford went from two to three, a game we haven't talked about yet. Florida went from four, it's four and a half. It's still four and a half. Uh, you, you know, you're dealing with uh, some very low numbers. Iowa State picked them to one and a half. Michigan State, one to one and a half. 
Michigan, the one game we're talking about now, one to two and a half, and Louisville five down to four. Uh, the, I don't know, can you remember a Sweet 16 where there's no big numbers? I mean, there's one game that's got a seven and a half. Everything else is low. Well, you know, part of it is that there's no Cinderella's left. These are all good. These are all pretty good. Uh, Tennessee, you can argue, there'll be some people who say that Tennessee's a Cinderella because they've got a low seed. But that, that was, a, again, it was a terrible seed. Uh, the Tennessee UMass game, that, they had the seeds backwards in the game. UMass was never a six seed. Uh, it was a, there was a terrible job at the committee, and Tennessee uh, was not an 11 seed. So well, anyway. overall, the committee, the committee did a much worse job in their seeding than they did in their selections. Yes. I mean, they made no some, question. They took some, they maybe took some teams they shouldn't have left some out, but the seeding was absolutely horrendous. Um, we do have a couple Cinderellas playing each other in Dayton and Stanford. I don't think anybody figured that they were going to make, but they happen to be playing each other, so there's really no mismatch there. Right. All right, well, let's uh, wrap it up with best bets, and again, let everybody know what's going on this weekend. I'll bet best bet of the under in the San Diego State-Arizona game. Uh, I think they'll barely get over 100 in this game. Uh, it's going to be a war, uh, not for the faint of heart. So uh, that's the uh, the best bet. Your best bet is absolutely my best bet, which is my college tournament game of the year. Goes on. It's one of the four Friday games. I like the game a lot. And again, you don't have to wait until Friday to get the game. Call right now and get it at a good number. One eight six six eight nine six sixteen twenty nine. It's only twenty nine dollars or twenty five dollars. I beg your pardon. In addition to that, you're going to get a full week of my NBA and college. And while you're on the line, ask about the baseball, okay? <laughs> because it's my best sport. It always I know it's the, not the most popular sport out there. It's the least popular as far as the betters are concerned among the four major, among the, uh, the three major sports. I don't count hockey. Uh, but there's money to be made, and uh, you want to grab your share of the profits. Find out about it. One eight six six eight nine six sixteen twenty nine. Make sure you're on for this big game, John. Mr. Vegas with the big five play countdown. That's right. And Mr. Vegas has a wise guys game of the year. This play is fifty dollars online right now at jimfice.com. Go and get it with a special. It's a five play countdown going Friday. All five plays for fifteen bucks, including that wise guys game of the year. One eight six six eight nine six sixteen twenty seven. What are you using for a best bet, John? Best bet will be that first game, Arizona Wildcats. Okay. So we've got one Arizona, one under San Diego State and Arizona. Jim, you've got your best bet in, uh, in just an absolutely awesome offer because you've been on a big roll. And here you've got this just alone, this one game, a Sweet 16 game of the year. That's 100 bucks by itself online. So right off the bat, people are making 75 bucks for doing nothing. Well, hopefully they'll make a lot more than that after they cash the ticket. But thanks, Dave. Yeah, if they call one eight six six eight four one sixteen fifty five, you get the guarantee along with my Sweet Sixteen game of the year, which is a hundred dollars online, as Dave mentioned. But you get if I don't win, which I don't expect that to happen, you'll get the rest of the college and the NBA through April seventh. My hero circles have been red hot. My games of the year six and zero. This is another one. Uh, this will be seven and zero. Call one eight six six eight four one sixteen fifty five. Now I do have other plays for sale right online. When you call one eight six six eight four one sixteen fifty five, ask about this special play and ask about whatever else I have, or you can go right to jimfeist dot com, which is where you are right now, and uh, you can buy everything online as well. Oh, this best bet. Uh, this was. This is not one of my. Bigger plays, but I'm going to give you Dayton, the Dayton Flyers, to win this game straight up over Stanford. All right. So we've got a little variety pack. Uh, Arizona from John, the under in that same game from me, and Dayton plus the uh, small number against Stanford. This is going to be a fun weekend. Uh, can't wait to see the eight teams that survive and uh, move on to the Elite Eight. Good tournament this year. Even if they did get some of the seeding wrong, it hasn't impacted the quality of the games uh, they've been outstanding. This is a, it's a good tournament. Uh, we hope you'll take advantage of the offers, and we hope you'll continue to uh, check out Proline as we continue with these shows 
Uh, we're on kind of on a sporadic basis during the summer. Uh, we don't do it every week for baseball. We'll have some, certainly. And uh, before you know it, football is going to be here. So keep watching ProLine and keep on getting those winners. Take advantage of the offers for Jim Feist and John Grant. I'm Dave Koken. Thanks a lot for watching. Good luck this weekend, and we'll talk to you soon.